Iconic perfumes and perfumers is the subject of today's Friday's Fragrant Quiz. Now, you might be wondering if you're a regular listener to Friday's Fragrant Quiz, why I've not released anything in about three or four weeks, any podcast that is, and I've been very quiet on social media. All will be revealed halfway through the quiz, I think, before I give you the answers. So let's jump in to question number one. A really easy one to start with. Which iconic perfume created by Ernest Beau was introduced by Chanel in 1921? It's the most iconic perfume in the entire world. Question number two. Who is the master perfumer behind the creation of J'adore by Dior? Now this is one of my favourite fragrances of all time. If you get the extra de parfum, um, excuse me, I have a frog in my throat. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I haven't released anything in a, almost a month. Um, I actually met this perfumer in Milan on the 8th of March, which was one of the last days for professionals to visit the perfume expi- exhibition called Exence which was, of course, in Milan, and it was it exhibited more than 300 indie perfume brands. And it was the most incredible exhibition I've ever been to related to fragrance in my entire life. And I'm going to do a video on YouTube and show you what I've got and the samples and the freebies that I got, because that's what expos are all about, isn't it? Getting swag, <laughs> although they were a bit tight. Uh, I don't blame them because there must have been thousands of people there visiting over the four days that they were open. Anyway, and if you're into perfumers, then this should be an easy one for you. Question number three. What ingredient in Thierry Mugler's Angel made it stand out upon its release in 1992? Jane, if you're listening, I know this is one of your favourite fragrances, but honestly, darling, it makes me... It makes me gag. I hate this fragrance. (laughs) Um, So what ingredient made this perfume Angel stand out upon its release in 92? Question number four. Which perfume designed by Jean-Paul Galin, not Jean-Paul Gaultier, Jean-Paul Galin, in 1969 was inspired by the sights and smells of an Indian market? Now, the date will give a little bit of it away. And Indian, is it classed as Oriental? Perhaps that might give it away a little bit as well. So which perfume designed by Jean-Paul Galin for the House of Galin in 69 was inspired by the sights and smells of an Indian market? Question number five. What unique feature does Creed's Aventus celebrate, marking its launch in 2010. So basically, what is the story behind the perfume and what was the inspiration of the perfume Aventus by Creed? This could be a tricky one, unless you Google it. (laughs) And you can find out on the website. Question number six. Which fragrance is known as the first modern perfume created by Amy Guerlain in 1889? Can you tell I'm a fan of Guerlain perfumes? Oh my goodness, they are the best. Question number seven. What groundbreaking method did Jo Malone introduce in the fragrance industry when she launched her brand? And it was groundbreaking apparently. I think people have been doing it in private, but she just made it very public and um, popular. Question number eight. In which city was the legendary perfumer Serge Lutin flagship store opened, becoming a shrine for perfume aficionados? So the legendary perfumer the brand Serge or Serge Lutin, Lutin's uh, flagship store, uh, which city 
was the flagship store Opendom. And it's famous. It's one of the most famous cities in the world and famed for perfume. What is the signature style? Question number nine. What is the signature style of the perfumer Anique Goutal? Evident in fragrances like Eau de Adrian. So what signature style is evident in her fragrances? So just basically adjectives. Um, that's a bit of a boring question, that isn't it? Okay, I'm going to give you a I'm going to give you a bonus question because that one's so boring. <laughs> I do read these questions before sometimes. <laughs> question number ten: Which perfume by Francis Kurdijan? I'm going to meet him, by the way, in May when I go to Grasse. So, which perfume by Francis Kurdijan has become synonymous with sophistication? Since it's released in 2009, it's one of the most talked about perfumes currently, one of the most talked about current perfumes, 21st century perfumes ever, well of its time anyway, um, at the moment. It's one of the most copied perfumes and when I get clients coming to me wanting to start their own brand, I say, well, you know, what do you want your fragrance to be like? One of the first questions. And they said, I want it to smell like Baccarat Rouge. I'm like, oh, right, I'll just give you the answer. Oh, gosh, I do that all the time. Anyway, never mind. Now you know the answer. <laughs> oh, it's Friday's fragrant quiz and it's just for fun. Come on. Um, here's your bonus question. What? I've got to stop giving the answers. <laughs> I don't care. I'm not recording it again. I've got other things to do. Got to go to the vets and get some flea treatment for my cats. <laughs> what is the name of the indie perfume brand founded by perfumer Liz Moores? Now, she's a very indie perfume brand, so if you're not on Instagram and you don't follow her, you might not have heard of her. Um, but what is the name of her brand? Her name is Liz Moores. She's British. She's a very niche indie perfume brand. What is the name of her brand, known for its evocative and storytelling fragrances inspired by literature and nature? And if you do follow her on Instagram, you'll see pictures of horses and owls and things like that. Um, and she's really cool. So, yeah, what is the name of her brand? Her name is Liz Moores. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to give the answer away. But now I am going to tell you why I've not recorded anything or released any podcasts for almost a month. Um... I went to Milan on the 5th of March, my birthday month. What a month that was. But I went to Milan and it was such a fantastic time. And it was for the Exons Exhibition Perfume Expo, which I'd mentioned earlier. More than 300 uh, really cool indie brands, mostly from Europe, some from the Middle East, a couple from the US. And it was just so fantastic. I went there, I met my friend Vincent, who I studied with at the Grass Institute of Perfumery. He's also an indie perfumer, but he wasn't showing showcasing there. But another one of the students that we studied with, uh, Sophie, beautiful Italian girl, um, she has started her own perfume brand, which I am so proud of her. And we saw her and um, yeah, I'll be talking about that on my YouTube channel. Um, didn't get any samples because she was just so busy running around all the time. But I caught flu and I was supposed to go to Florence on a high speed train on the Saturday. So the Saturday, we basically we went to the expo on the Wednesday, the 6th, which was the first day of the expo. And we went on the third day, which was a Friday. And on the second day, we parted in Milan during the day. It was amazing. But on the Saturday, Vincent was leaving and I was supposed to go on a high speed train to Florence because I wanted to go to the Santa Maria Novello. Um, for pharmacy, which is the oldest perfume shop in the world that's still open. Um, but it's a pharmacy and a perfume shop. And I really wanted to go and see this place and I also wanted to go and look at um, the Museum of the Dimitri family, which is Catherine Dimitri is, you know, um, very important uh, when it comes to uh, fragrance and, you know, fragrance actually evolved. The art of perfume making actually started in Florence in Italy, not in France which is what many people think. And it started with Catherine Dimitri and her perfumer, René Bianco, later called René La Florentine. But I got the flu, I couldn't go. I actually spent the whole day on Saturday in bed. 
And I was so upset and I, it was a flu like I'd never had. Um, I'd not had a flu like this since January 2005. I remember because it was my first holiday with my husband, then boyfriend. And we went to New York and I was sick for the whole 10 days that I was there. So it was a proper flu, not just a bit of a cold. And I'm still not 100%. So if my voice sounds a little bit croaky. Um, but yeah, I was so ill and I couldn't eat. At one point I went to the pharmacy and I couldn't eat. Uh, I said, I've not eaten for five days. I mean, I know I could do with skipping a few meals. So that was fine. And, you know, the silver lining of the flu was I lost a few pounds. Uh, but I couldn't eat solid food. It was awful. I had absolutely no appetite whatsoever. Um but I wasn't sneezing and my nose wasn't running, which was really weird. It was just... Anyway, I don't want to talk about it anymore because um, it's depressing. And um, when I think about it, it's like I get these psychosomatic symptoms and I think I'm getting it again. So I'm going to go on now and I'm going to tell you the answers to the quiz. But apologies if you've missed my Friday's Fragrant Quiz. And um, I promise I will start releasing them again weekly now that I am much better. Thank you. I've actually had a few people asking me, as well, are you alright? Where have you been? You've been really quiet, which I think is really lovely and I'm very happy that people have missed me. So I need to step up my social media as well. Okay, so here are the answers. Question number one was, which iconic perfume created by Ernest Beau was introduced by Chanel in 1921? Now, if you don't know the answer to this, perhaps you've been living in a cave or something um, for the last hundred years. Um, <laughs> the answer is Chanel number no. five. And this is the world's most famous perfume. Uh, Fran the French government at one point actually reported that a bottle of Chanel number no. five is sold every 30 seconds around the world. And this was created by Ernest Beau for Coco Chanel, symbolising timeless sophistication. And of course, it's 100 years on. It's now 103 years old. And um, actually, she released it on the 5th of May. So it is almost to the day, 103 years old. And uh, yeah, that was it. That's the answer. I'm not going to bang on too much about it because my Friday's fragrant quiz 10 minute thing is turning into 15, 20 minutes. Question number two. Who is the master perfumer behind the creation of J'adore by Dior? And the answer is Calice Becker. And she's renowned for crafting this iconic perfume, which I think is about the number two best-selling perfume of all time. Um, and it captures the essence of femininity with this opulent floral bouquet. And I was lucky enough to have met her when I went to Milan at the expo on the last day. Question number three. What ingredient in Thierry Mugler's Angel made it stand out upon its release in 1992? And the answer is a cotton candy note known as ethyl maltol. Angel was the first perfume, allegedly, to use ethyl maltol, or perhaps maybe overuse it, the same way that people say Chanel Number no. 5 was the first fragrance to use aldehydes. It wasn't. It wasn't the first commercial perfume to use aldehydes. It was the first commercial perfume to overuse aldehydes. So perhaps this might have been um, the instance with Angel, um, although it is reported on some sites that it is the first fragrance to use it and I doubt that very much um, but it gave it a very distinct sweet note that revolutionized fragrance trend so perhaps it's the overuse of it but anyway fact check go and get google it uh, question number four which perfume designed by Jean-Paul Guerlain in 1969 was inspired by the sights and smells of an Indian market and the answer is Shalimar. Although Shalimar was created earlier, Jean-Paul Galland's travels inspired many of his creations, including Shalimar, known for its opulent oriental notes, reminiscent of exotic markets. Question number five. What unique feature does Creed's Aventus celebrate, marking its launch in 2010? And this is The Life of Napoleon Bonaparte. Aventus is celebrated for its adventurous and ambitious spirit, inspired by the dramatic life of Napoleon, with notes reflecting strength and success. But of course, you know, he had adulterous affairs and, you know, broken marriages and, you know, the death of his ex-wife, Josephine, and the wars that he went through. So apparently that's what Aventus, by Creed, celebrates. 
Question number six. What fragrance is known as the first modern perfume created by the House of Galin? And the perfumer was Amy Galin in 1889. My God, I thought I was old. The answer is Jiki. And Jiki is considered the first, quote, modern perfume for its use of synthetic ingredients alongside natural extracts, a pioneering approach in perfumery. Now, it is true that Galang was one of the first perfume houses to incorporate synthetics, making fragrances more affordable. Um, and some of those first synthetics were coumarin, which is a synthetic version of tonka bean, and vanillin, which is a synthetic counterpart of vanilla. So an alternative to vanilla and about a thousand times cheaper. Same with coumarin. Um, but they say that Shalimar was created because they added by mistake vanilla to Jiki. And they loved it so much that they decided to, you know, give it some modifications, etc. Um, stories, I don't know. Let's see. Google it. Or you can go to Galan and ask them, I suppose. I might just do that. And question number seven. What groundbreaking method did Joe Malone introduce in the fragrance industry? And the answer is fragrance combining, or they call it fragrance layering, but fragrance combining. And Joe Malone popularised this, co this concept uh, by combining her fragrances, which allowed individuals to create unique scents by layering different perfumes. So if you liked the iconic lime basil and mandarin and you wanted some florals, let's say honeysuckle and jasmine, which unfortunately got discontinued because that was the only fragrance of Jo Malone's that I liked a lot. Um, but I recently uh, got a sample sent to a perfume house and got them to send me a, um, a copy of it using the grass chromatography mass spectro that they do with fragrances so you can give a sample to a perfume house and they will basically copy it for you um so yeah it was fragrance combining and they used to encourage people i know i used to go into the shop in dubai and they would encourage you we'll put this fragrance on and then this fragrance and then this one you know probably was it encouraging to you to buy like two three four fragrances you can lay them all on top of each other and smell different every day um, and have different combinations of fragrances perhaps good marketing technique isn't it especially if they sell more perfumes well they don't last very long because they're more of a cologne strength which is one of the weakest strengths of fragrance Question number eight. In which city was the legendary perfumer Serge Lutens flagship store open, which became a shrine for perfume aficionados? I've never been to this store. I've been to Paris, but I've never been to this one. And their flagship store was opened in Paris, which is apparently a mecca for perfume lovers. And this showcased his unique and visionary approach to fragrance. Do get in touch if you've ever been to their store in Paris. I'd love to know what it's like. Perhaps I'll visit it next time I go and do a little video, a little vlog for my YouTube. Question number nine. Oh, this is a really boring one, but never mind. I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, what is the signature style of perfumer Anique Goutal evidence? What is the signature style of her uh, fragrances? And basically the answer is natural and refined elegance. I told you it was boring. <laughs> Her perfumes, including Eau de Adrian, are celebrated for their natural simplicity and refined elegance. And she draws from personal memories and emotions. Question number 10, which um, I gave you the answer to <laughs> by mistake. Oh, well. Which perfume by Francis Kurdijan has become synonymous with sophistication since its release in 2009? And the answer is Baccarat Rouge 540. This was created by Francis and it's famed for its sophistication, luminous blend and making it a modern classic in the fragrance world. And yes, uh, like I said, it's, it's the most... Uh, it's, I think it's probably the most overrated fragrance of the 21st century. Uh, a lot of people talk about it. A lot of perfume reviewers go on about it. Um, anyway. Bonus question. 
What is the name of the indie perfume brand founded by perfumer Liz Moores, known for its evocative and storytelling fragrances inspired by literature and nature? Is she a classically trained perfumer or is she self-taught? I'm not quite sure. Perhaps you'll find out on her Instagram. Um, But she's really cool and her brand is called Papillon, which is French for butterfly. Um, Or, you know, if you're not sophisticated, Papillon. Um, But it's actually Papillon artisan perfumes and they offer handcrafted fragrances that tell stories and evoke emotions she draws inspiration from classic literature and the natural world and i mentioned before she has owls and horses and all these different animals and she loves going in i think she lives near the woods she's always in the woods um her perfumes are the bottles the designs they're very simple they're very artisan-y um they're really cute they're very simple because she focuses on the ingredients and the ingredients that she uses are just sublime and i saw a picture of her on instagram and i think the 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 quote on instagram was just this is what 5 kg of labdanum looks like and it was like a massive um aluminium uh, bottle 5 kg you can imagine how big that is and it was all filled with labdanum which she was putting in one of her one of her fragrances so um yes she handcrafts all her fragrances and she sells them into a lot of stores i know that one of them is lucky sense which i think is based in the u.s but she sells her fragrances all over the world and she's extremely popular people adore her fragrances um i'm actually yet to try them so perhaps i might treat myself because it's um was my birthday month in march and i was sick for uh, most of the month so perhaps i'll treat myself to one of her perfumes although she's based in the uk and i'm not sure how shipping from the uk to france is um, anyway, I might find one of her stockists here in France. So that's the end of today's Friday's Fragrant Quiz. I hope you enjoyed that and my little anecdotes. I aim to... I said I was going to get personal because March was my birthday month and talk about my journey through fragrance. And I probably will do that, but I want to get rid of this frog in my throat first. So I will aim to release one on Tuesday uh, to talk about my journey, the ups and downs and the roller coaster of my life that brought me to... Uh, where I am today but what actually triggered and started my journey which was a very sad time in my life uh, but very pivotal and perhaps if I hadn't been going through that I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now Uh, so that's why I always like to draw on uh, bad experiences and think what can I learn from this and um, what will be the silver lining of this very dark cloud so I will aim to try and record something over the weekend For that, sorry it went on for like a really long time, but um, I'm sure that you've missed me and my dulcet tones. And uh, I will see you um, and you will hear me sometime next week. Take care, stay fabulous. A bientôt.